Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be doing another quilting play-by-play -play where you guys get to see as I'm actually quilting on the long arm as I film it with my GoPro. And I'm going to talk you through what it is that I'm doing so you guys can get an idea, maybe learn a new stitch, and get some ideas on how to quilt a quilt on your own home sewing machine or long arm. So today we're going to be looking at Sparkle. And this is a quilt that I did for our subscription club, Stash with Stephanie. Uh, members got 12 fat quarters from this collection, Thistle Patch from Clothworks, and then they had the opportunity to buy a finishing kit, which in this one included six additional fat quarters to complete the line, plus uh, some background fabric for the outsides of the star. Um, this one was really fun to create. Sometimes when you get lines where you get a lot of neutrals, like there are a lot of these white prints in the background or green rays and in this case a light purple and they really read really light and so that can be a challenge where you are designing and you want to use the entire line so what I did was I used the light prints as my large diamond and then I used my medium and my dark prints for my small diamonds and I was able to create something that went out uh, pretty wide and just sort of radiated out so it's really fun so if you're doing this at home I believe it was 18 fat quarters with at least probably a good third of them being reading as light prints so you could use in that center and then the rest reading as medium and dark and then you need about a yard or so for your background and that information is all available in the pattern you can download it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com all right so now we're going to take a look as i quilt it and we're going to go through it um, one thing that you'll need to know is i used a combination of free motion quilting and ruler work. And one of my favorite rulers to use is the Peace and Quilt 4 in 1. It's actually kind of hard to see on camera because it is so clear. Um, but what it is, is it's got a nice curved edge. So it's good if you are doing um, curved uh, edges that you want to be nice scallops that are even. But what I really like about it is it's got a really nice long straight edge that I can use in many different applications. And this one I'm just using it for outlining, but you also can use it to do straight line quilting or also get in some diagonals as well. So we're going to be using this quite a bit as we continue on with this series. We don't currently carry this. I would like to. I'm waiting to hear back from Natalia to see if we can get it wholesale. Otherwise, you can get it from her. Um, one thing I will tell you is if you have not bought a ruler for quilting before, um, they're different than the ones that you get when you're cutting pieces. Those are all uh, about an eighth of an inch thick with the acrylic. These are a full quarter inch thick and it's so that when you're using your ruler foot and getting it even with the edge that it is it doesn't like hop over the machine because that's like a safety problem you need it to sit nice and and in line with the edge of that and also, uh, because acrylic is in really high demand right now for plastic barriers, for safety, um, the price of these uh, across the board, not just Italians, have, has gone up because of supply and demand. Maybe it'll come back down when, when things even out a little bit in the end, but for now, um, Quilting rulers are definitely a tad bit more expensive, so don't have too much sticker shock. It really helps you create a really fabulous design that I would not be capable of doing without it. Now for thread, I use my trusty glide. I've got the 40 weight here in the color bone. It's not quite white white. I, I probably would have used white white, but I was out when I was doing this quilt. Um, and I really like doing a nice white for when I'm doing all over quilting like this because it really just kind of hides away more than you think it would. Um, it definitely hides on these lighter ones, but even in the medium and dark prints, it kind of just fades into the background as long as you don't have a super thick thread. The other thing I like, and you'll see here, is I can travel over it quite a few times without having a real big buildup of thread. So this is my go-to thread whenever I'm doing quilting on my long arm. All right, let's get quilting. All right, so you can see here, I am starting to quilt where I'm outlining my diamonds and this is the very top row so the whole area to the left is background that I'm going to fill in later and what you have to be cognizant of doing when you're doing this for the first time is your ruler always has to be about a quarter inch away or actually exactly a quarter inch away from where you're stitching it's kind of hard to tell right here but in the next angle when I go up you're going to be able to see better that's because the edge of your 
ruler foot on your long arm or your home sewing machine is always exactly a quarter inch away from your needle. So you want to make sure that you are uh, always spacing that out. Now, the other thing you want to pay attention to is when it's time to stop and reposition, you always need to stop with that needle down and just hold it in place. My machine has a stitch regulator, which is really nice because if I'm not moving, it's not moving, but I still like physically turn off the machine in between when I'm ready to move. So here you can see I'm ready to move. So I stop with that needle down, move my ruler and then get going. So the very first thing I'm going to do whenever I'm doing ruler work is I'm or even something like this where I want to do some free motion inside each individual diamond is I'm going to outline everything. So what I'm doing is I'm not stitching exactly in the ditch. I'm stitching right next to the ditch. And in this case, I'm doing it in the white background uh, because I want it to show less. And so it's going to show less there. So I can go all the way around these diamonds and really define them very well. And that way my, it will help my uh, free motion stitches show off that much more and give it a little bit more texture. It also is going to give me some great places to travel as I'm working in between free motion quilting stitches because it isn't always going to work great to start from one end and go straight to the other as you travel around your quilt. we could talk a little bit about path here. So what I'm doing is I'm working from my left to my right and trying to do it all in one path. So this is a very top row of the quilt. So I'm just going over the top of each diamond point as I work my way around. Now that's going to change a little bit how I move when I get into the inside. But for the most part, I want to be able to go over each seam just once, although sometimes you do have to travel over things a second time. But I'm just kind of going up, down, up, down, up, down until I make it all all the way across that entire pass because you want to break thread as little as possible because it leads for stronger quilting and also it's a lot less headache if you can make that happen and do one entire pass at a time. All right so here I am I'm just doing some really easy swirls here and you really only need to get a couple of stitches down really well and then you can embellish and change them up a little bit. So this one is just, I'm coming into the swirl and I'm coming back out. So I'm just rotating in, coming to a point and going back out. And the biggest thing when you do these is you really want to come to a good point uh, and then kind of even just pause in place for a second and then work your way back out. Um, otherwise you end up with weird loops looking in there or just things that don't look quite right. So you just want to keep working on that. And if you notice, I kind of come in one way and go out the other. So here I'm coming into the right and then I'm going to swoop out and I'm going to go out to the left. And if you work, keep going counterclockwise and clockwise, which every single loop alternating between it, they really do fit together really well. And in this case, I'm kind of working from side to side as well as up to up and down at the same time as I'm filling in those stitches. And my goal is basically to have all my swirls be about the same size and to fill in the space evenly so that I have a nice even texture throughout that entire background. So now you can see I'm coming closer to the exterior diamonds and I'm really using those uh, swirls to really get into that space. I want to work my way in and create that texture as close as I can to fill those diamonds in. And sometimes you've got to go around and break your pattern a little bit and you don't see it you know, when it's all done, you just see the texture and it ends up looking good. But here you can see how I'm just moving around the quilt to just fill that background space in as evenly as I can and working my way out to where I haven't left any holes by the time I fill in that entire section. All right, so now I'm gonna be using the ruler again so that I can outline the rest of these pieces. And so we've already done the top. So I outlined the top first and then I filled in completely across the top with the swirls. And now I'm gonna outline the first row of diamonds so that way I can start filling those in with free motion quilting. You always wanna outline first because it defines that shape and helps it maintain its shape as you're quilting because as you get a little crazy with free motion, sometimes it can warp a little bit. So make sure you're always doing that outlining first. Now I am stitching next to the ditch. I, uh, 
press these seams open. It really allows me to get right into those points and really create that definition uh, with the diamonds, but uh, it also means that you can't stitch right in the ditch. You're gonna stitch right next to the ditch. So I am not quite exactly on the seam. I'm just like a needle width to the side of it. And the Quill Police always come for me about this. I have never ever had a problem. There are more than 70 quilts behind me that I've done this with and it is just fine. You have my permission. And if you have a problem with it, you don't have to do your quilts that way. And that's okay. You don't need to leave a comment. Okay, so here I am. I'm just going along and you can see that I am a quarter inch away and I'm just following those diamonds and I am just going up and down those rows. And I think when I come to the center row, I've got to go straight up and down, uh, but we will wait and see what happens here. Here we go. I think we are at the center. So for this one, I'm going, what am I doing? It's been a little bit since I quilted this quilt. Let's see what we did. Nope, I just went straight on. Um, so what you can do, uh, we just passed that center row, is you can come straight up and go straight back down, which I have done in the past. Um, but you can just see, I'm just going up, down, up, down, up, down, as we work our way across the quilt to make sure all those diamonds get outlined before we start doing any free motion quilting inside. You can see that I've already quilted the row above it. So you can see that I've already outlined and done free motion quilting. So I really am just hitting the next row at this point. And I'm just going straight down to get the next part ready for me to fill in with free motion quilting. Here we fit the end so you can quilt right off the edge. And I always like to also quilt down my sides so that way we get a nice good uh, square quilt as well. All right, so now we're gonna start our free motion quilting. You see I've got my thread secured over there in the edge. I'm gonna try to quilt this entire pass in one swoop using travel stitches. So I kind of liken this to a topographical math. I'm kind of just doing a swirly line around the edges of the diamond. Now for this one, I'm coming in a little further because I'm gonna have to work my way back out. So I'm maybe a half inch in there. Now I'm leaving a good maybe inch or so in between and I'm just following that swirly line and I really don't have a, a specific way that I'm doing it because you want them all to look a little different. So then I came to a point at the end and now I'm just working my way out, going in between the stitching lines that I did before. And I'm just trying to keep it wavy and in between those lines so that it looks very organic and not super planned out and computerized. So I've got a plan, but we're gonna make each one a little different. So now I'm aiming to come out right at the tip of that diamond, and then I'm gonna start that process again on the next one. So I'm kind of hugging the side there, and I'm gonna come down, and now here's where I come in just a smidge more because I need to work my way back out when I come out with that swirl. And it's kind of an elongated swirl. It really, to me, looks like topographical maps. So I'm gonna come in, and one more time here. And now here we are with our tight little point and we're gonna work our way right back out. So I just keep doing this again and again, making each one a little bit different. But also my main goal here is to just have some nice wavy waves going around to accentuate that diamond shape, but also make it very organic feeling because we're dealing with flowers in the fabric. So I wanna really uh, make that work. All right, so now I'm not at the bottom of a diamond, so I've got to travel. So I pulled my ruler over, and I'm gonna travel on one of those lines that I've already stitched, and that's why I really love that glide thread because you can travel over it without it getting too bulky of a seam. And so now I'm gonna work my way back down, except this time my diamond is vertical instead of side to side. So again, I'm leaving some room to the right of that so that I can work my way back out. We've hit the top of the diamond, and so we're just gonna keep working our way in, making sure to leave space so that way we can stitch back out and create real good organic texture. All right, we got our point, so we're gonna work our way back out. You can see I'm just going right in between where those stitching lines are. 
and just wobbling back and forth. It's nice. It's a nice smooth wobble. It's not jerky, but there really isn't a rhyme or reason to where I undulate in and out. All right, so now I'm gonna slow down, get back into that point. And now we gotta travel, are we traveling? Looks like this is the one that I didn't get. So I've gotta finish outlining that center bit. So I'm going all the way up and then I bet you I'm going all the way back down. Yes, I am. So that way that that center diamond was able to get outlined too. Uh, I could have also done this when I was outlining everything to start with. All right, so I'm just gonna let you watch me quilt here for a little bit. I'm just going in and out and making sure to leave room to work my way out and traveling when necessary in order to get my way to the bottom of the next diamond. So here you can see that I'm traveling again and that's to get to the bottom of the next diamond. You can see I've already done the one above and that's where that travel is really, really helpful. Uh, you just use your ruler, you just pick it up and you work your way around to where you want to start. That way you can get one entire pass across your quilt without having to break thread one time and that way you just have your threads at the one side and at the other and you don't have to worry about hiding threads or them maybe coming out with use and over time. It's a really great technique but you need a good thread in order to make it happen. So for me that's fly. It behaves really well in my machine um, but I only use the one that has the sheen to it I don't use the one that it is just plain uh, cotton or also without that that coating to it So that's it. That's how I quilted Sparkle. It was a quilt that we designed to go with our Stash and with Stephanie Club. I used Thistle Patch from Clothworks. Uh, we have a teeny little bit of it left. There's a little bit on the bolt. We have a lot of the gray that we use for the binding. Uh, we still have quite a bit of that. Um, but for the most part, it, it's gone. Uh, we have a few remnants. Usually our Stash and with Stephanie fabric sells out uh, pretty quickly. So it's a great way, reason to be a member of the club. If you join, you also get this plus about 200 other pat dollars worth of patterns for free that are all Fat Quarter friendly. You get a discount on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop. And also you get 10 Fat Quarters for $29.99 a month, uh, every month in your mailbox and exclusive discounts to get additional fabric so that you can make the quilt that we designed to go with it. And we are now going to do some videos on how to quilt it as well. We've got some uh, interviews planned with our designers that we're featuring. So it's a really fun one to join, but if you just want the pattern to, you can get that at our website. It's called Sparkle, and you can get it at shop.quiltanatomist.com. The foreign run ruler, you can get directly from the 
Natalia Bonner over at Peace and Quilt. Hopefully someday we'll have it on our website. And the glide I get uh, from Habendash. And I believe you have to have a business account to get to that. There's got to be another place where you sell it. Uh, we have not usually had good luck stocking thread. People like to buy it when that's on sale and no other time. So we don't typically stock that. But I hope that you have learned a lot from this tutorial, that you've given you some ideas on how you can maybe finish your own uh, quilts on your own home sewing machine and how you can use ruler work to really outline and then uh, get your pieces nice and stabilized so you can really have some fun with free motion quilting in them without your worrying about your blocks getting all warped and crazy. And I really just love the texture that this created. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it a little better. I mean, it really just like radiates out and it, the organic feel with all of the, the florals in the prints, I feel like it just really works really well together. And I had a lot of fun with that. Um, the swirls on the outside are also a great filler and it's a really easy stitch to do. And one thing that you can do if you're not so sure if you can do this straight out on the long arm is you can take and you can practice this with just a pencil and paper or a dry erase board. Uh, the, that actually works best because then you can just wipe it off and do it again. Um, and really just practice until you get it done. So really this was just so easy. I mean, I just came in, worked my way around, you know, until I got to my center and then I worked my way right back out. And it really is a lot of fun. It creates this radiating texture going out, um, but that, that thread that you can quilt and it looks like I've got like three passes going off right over here. You really can't even tell from a distance. You gotta get right up close to know that I quilted over that quite a bit. And as I worked my way around the quilt and traveled and this glide is really fantastic for that. All right, well, thanks so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. Let me know if you give it a try on one of your own quilts. This is just a really fun pattern to use whenever you've got diamonds and we have a lot of diamond patterns. So thanks so much and until next time, happy quilting.